Hello. So these are the warm up problems. The first one it says that a cannon, something like that, is tilted upward 30 degrees. with respect to the horizontal. And it's going to fire a cannonball with a speed of, let's just speed, so the magnitude, a speed of 100 meters per second. What is the component of the cannonball's velocity parallel to the ground? So, we can rewrite the, this or redraw it in a more, I guess, geometrical way. So this is the velocity vector. And we know that the magnitude of the velocity vector is 100 meters per second. We know that this angle here is 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal. And we want to know the component that is parallel to the ground. So this one will be the horizontal component. Um, the one that is perpendicular to the ground will be the vertical component. Okay, so a better color over here. So we want the horizontal component. We have this angle. So we want the adjacent side to this angle. And we know that adjacent over hypotenuse is equal to cosine of the angle, cosine 30. So in this case, uh, we know the angle is 30 degrees, but we want to know the size of this adjacent. So we can multiply this one times the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is, of course, the magnitude of the velocity. So we can put 100 meters per second over here. The angle is 30 degrees. And that's equal to adjacent. And adjacent is the horizontal or x component of the velocity, which is exactly what we want to know. So cosine of 30 degrees, square root of 3 over 2, also known as 0 0.866, and then there's like another zero over here, times 100 meters per second. We had said that there's no units inside the argument of a trigonometric function. There's no units um, once you get what the number is. So this is unitless, this has units of meters per second, which is what you want because this is a velocity. So this is gonna be, you know, 87 meters per second. And that is uh, actually the answer that we have on the homework. So that's always good. It was part A. So let's look at part B now. For part B, you have uh, two people, Jack and Jill, they run up the hill at three meters per second. So we have their uh, velocity vector. This will be the velocity because I have the same um, velocity vector. So uh, it's called this gel. The 
magnitude of this vector is three meters per second. The horizontal component, so Vx, and I think we only care about Gill in this problem. Uh, Vx is going to be going to know the angle of the heel. So it's going to be this one. Um, magnitude of the velocity. Since we want to know this angle and we have the horizontal component, this is equal to 2.5 meters per second. This is cosine theta. Right. So we want to know the angle, this one over here. And we want to know the vertical component. So the other thing that we're going to need is the, the magnitude is the square root of the x squared plus the y squared. So um, we know this magnitude is at three meters per second. And we also know Vx is this 2.5 meters per second. So we can solve for the vertical component using the Pythagorean theorem. So we can put the square over here. We get rid of that square root. And we want to solve for Vy. So we can move this one over here. Uh, subtracting, we still have this one. And now we take the square root of these, square root of these. This one gives you just Vy, uh, because you have the square over there. And so that's how it looks. So we know this one is three meters per second squared minus, this one is 2.5 meters per second. Remember that they gave us all of this data. And it is the square root of these equals Vy. So we can plug in the numbers in there. This is gonna be nine meters squared, second squared minus, is 6.25 meters squared divided by second, second squared. We have the square root. It's still equal to Vy. So that thing inside is going to give us 2.75. And square root of 2.75, that's uh, 1.66. We had meters square second squared. We take the square root of that, so now it's meters per second. Okay, so this is the y component of the velocity. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to know. Uh, we also want to know the angle. So now that we have uh, both the vertical component, the, yes, the vertical component, vertical, uh, yes, vertical component 1.66 and horizontal component 2.5, we can use uh, the arc tangent, right? So tangent of theta is um, opposite divided by adjacent. We could use, also the cosine theta if we wanted because this one is uh, adjacent 
over hypotenuse. And we know both the adjacent is the horizontal and the hypotenuse is three. Uh, and we can also use the sign as this one is opposite divided by hypotenuse. We know the hypotenuse and we just calculated the opposite, it's this one. So we could use um, either of these trigonometric functions. Now let's go with the tangent. So we want to know the angle. So we have to do the arc tangent or inverse tangent of, um, well, Our tangent of the tangent of theta is equal to the r tangent of opposite divided by adjacent. Yes? The arc tangent of the tangent of theta is just theta, which is what we're looking for. So this one went a little bit too far away, so let's move it back in here. So it's gonna be the arc tangent. Opposite is the horizontal component. So the 1.66 meters per second. And the, the adjacent is the horizontal component. So it's the 2.5 meters per second. The meters per second go away, so it's just 1.66 divided by 2.5. And we take the arc tangent of that. So it says that theta is arc tangent of 0 0.664 is this division. And that's equal to 33. 0.6 degrees. Okay, and the, well, we can put a box around it. The answer says uh, 34 degrees. So it's a, it's a pretty good number. All right, so for this one, we calculated one of the sites. We were given two, we calculated the third one using the Pythagor Pythagorean theorem. And then we, you know, once we had all this information, uh, we calculated the angle, um, in this case, using the tangent, but we could have used uh, any other of the sites that um, we were aware of. All right, so pretty much uh, plug and play, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this problem. Thank you.